Hello everybody and welcome back to Teach Me to Science. My name is Saren and today we're going to be talking about acidic and basic salts. This is a topic that many of my students are currently struggling with and with their exam coming up I thought it would be a great time to cover this topic. So today we're going to talk about what is a salt, identifying acidic versus basic salts, and then acidic and basic salts and equilibrium. So that means a problem that my students might see on their exam. What is a salt? So many of you might think that, oh, a salt like table salt. Well, table salt is only one type of salt and all salts are not table salt. So we'll get that straight out of the way. Um, all salts are not table salt. There are other kinds of salts besides table salt. Um, fun fact, the salt that they put on the road during the winter is not table salt. So if you thought that it was table salt, sorry to break it to you, it's not table salt. So the actual definition of a salt is an ionic compound. Go back to Gen Chem 1 and think about what ionic versus covalent compounds are. So a salt is an ionic compound that is formed by reacting an acid and a base in a neutralization reaction. A neutralization reaction is simply a reaction where you react an acid and a base and you produce a salt and water. So now that we know what a salt is, we can talk about if the salt is acidic or basic. Acidic salts are capable of donating a proton. It has to have a proton to donate to be able to be an acidic salt. And it can be either the cation or the anion. If you remember from Gen Chem 1, anions are negative and cations are positive. It can be either the anion or the cation, um, but the most important thing is it has to have a proton to donate. The definition of a basic salt is basically the opposite. A basic salt has to be able to accept a proton, meaning it doesn't already have um, all the protons it can have, or it has protons but can accept more. So there are a couple instances where a base can have some protons already, and then it can act as a base or an acid, which is called amphoteric. And that's something my students should know for their exam, what an amphoteric substance is. Let's do some examples because that's really the best way to understand these salts. So these are some examples of salts that I have here below. And what I want everybody to think about who's watching this video is if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. So if you're one of my students, I would highly recommend pausing the video right here and trying to answer this yourself before I go through and answer these here. So I'll give you a minute. Okay, so before I actually start answering these questions, what I want you to realize is the first thing when you get a problem with a salt is you should ask yourself, what is going to happen to the salt if I put it in water? So H2O stands for water. So what is going to happen to NaCl if I put it in water? Well, it's an ionic compound, so it's going to break apart into Na plus and Cl minus. So the next thing you think about is are either of these compounds capable of donating a proton or accepting a proton? If either of those things are true, then you have an acidic or a basic salt. Now, one thing my students might think is that you could have Cl accept a proton and create HCl, but that is not possible because HCl is a strong acid and it will never form. It can only dissociate in solution. So remember that that's something that the professors are definitely going to be testing my students on. So this salt actually, so Na cannot accept or donate and chloride cannot accept or donate. Both of those substances are neutral. So overall, this salt is neutral. All right, let's look at the next one. So the next one, we have Br, which is neutral. This has protons. It could potentially donate protons, which means it could be acidic. Um, the one thing that my students will know is that this is not going to be something that can accept any more protons. It already has as many protons as it can have. So already all the protons, we'll say. 
So it already has all the protons, which means it can't accept any more, which means this is acidic because it's going to be donating protons. So that means overall, this is an acidic salt. All right, now let's go up to this example. Sodium, we know, is neutral. Um, I'm going to give my students a big hint here. Any of the column 1 or 2 cations will be in neutral. Any of the alkali metals or the alkali earth metals will be neutral in their um in their salt, so they will be neutral. Um, and also any of the halogens. Any of the halogens will also be neutral. When, a, when you're evaluating this particular salt here, NaF, you have to realize that NaF, first of all, it doesn't have any protons, so it can't be acidic. So not acidic. And then you have to ask yourself, could it be basic? Could it accept a proton? And the answer is yes, it is basic. Because HF is a weak acid, which means it can form. So overall, this salt is basic. All right, last example. So here we have potassium. So this is one of the row one or twos, which means it's neutral. This, on the other hand, most of my students will know is acetate. Acetate forms acetic acid in solution, which is an acid, meaning this acetate ion is a base. So overall, this salt is basic. All right, that was kind of a lot right now. Um, let's do a quick one more practice problem. So this practice problem is something that my students could potentially see on their exam. So if I react the following, what are the products going to be? So this requires you to look at the salt and see what it is, if it's acidic or basic, and then determine what's going to be formed based on that. So this sodium we know is neutral. However, this anion is something that my students probably won't be familiar with. This is the conjugate of formic acid. So this is the conjugate of formic acid, meaning that it is a base. Great. So now that we got that out of the way, we know that bases accept protons. So what's going to happen is this base is going to steal a hydrogen from water, creating HCOOH, which is formic acid, and hydroxide, which is a base, a strong base. All right, so that are, those are the products of this reaction, formic acid and hydroxide. Um, and you know that because this salt right here is a base, so it has to steal a proton from water, and then all that's left is hydroxide. And the one thing that I'm going to mention is that, um, so this, this reaction would also produce sodium ions, and the reason that these two do not form sodium hydroxide is because sodium hydroxide is a strong base. And I've been harping on my students to this that strong bases do not form from salts. So that's my next slide here. The next and final slide is that I really, really want to stress that strong acids and bases are not going to be produced in these reactions. Strong acids and bases cannot be produced in a reaction. They can never be the products of a reactant in this case because they are strong. So they will not form. Um, strong acids and bases only dissociate in solution. They do not reassociate, and that's just a property of strong acids and bases. So that's something really important to keep in mind. 
All right, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope my students are very excited that I put this up because this is a topic that a lot of them have been struggling with and I hope it's super helpful to them. Um, if you could please subscribe to my channel and like. I love science and I'm super excited to be teaching everybody about it so I love when more people subscribe and like and watch my videos because I feel like I'm getting the word out about how awesome science is. So thank you again for watching. See you later. Bye!